On behalf of our conference hosts, Drs. Bazan and Anne Tryon, welcome to Jubilee 2020, the official online experience. Tonight, we are absolutely excited to have you here with us, and tonight is officially night number three. Can you believe it that technology has been so amazing in the sense that we have been able to have our annual conference celebrating 34 years that our founders and their family of four children began such an amazing work. Well, join me as we have a look at the highlights of what these past 34 years have been like. Yes indeed, God has been exceedingly and abundantly faithful to this wonderful work of 34 years. Now, I'm sure you have seen on every single social media platform, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and even WhatsApp, that this Jubilee 2020 will have some of the best speakers in the world. To name a few, we have Dr. Bill Winston joining us all the way from the United States of America, Apostle Garrett Dufty from the UK, from Canada, Apostle Sherwin Tryon, no stranger to Jubilee, we have Apostle Colin Lomo and from last night, a powerhouse and a specialist king in the marketplace, Minister Anupadiyachi. At this moment, we'd really, really love for you to see what the past 34 years of Jubilee have been like. Have a look at the highlights.
Last night was such an amazing importation of glory manifestation with Minister Anu Padiachi. And tonight, man oh man, listen to me, all the way from the United States of America, we have Dr. Bill Winston. I remember the last time he was with us, I still remember the teachings that he gave us as a church, and I am so, so, so excited to hear from him again tonight. Before we get started, guys, we want to keep in touch with everybody. We want to know how Jubilee 2020, the online experience, has been for you. So please, in your comments, please let us know where are you watching from. Please don't be shy. Take a picture of your family, upload it, hashtag Jubilee 2020, the online experience, and we are just excited to, just to hear from you. Don't feel shy, guys. We want to see them thumbs up. We want to see them hearts. Make sure that you are clicking them hearts. Start a watch party if you are on Facebook especially. Share the link with your friends on WhatsApp and the different social media platforms that we have. On Facebook, there's a small share button there. There is a watch party option. Start a watch party and your friends can be able to experience this glowing manifestation that we're going to have tonight. So, before we get started, have a look at our conference announcements. Sanborn and greetings. We would like to congratulate uh, our dear father, Bishop Basil Tryon and our mother, Ma Anne, for their 34th anniversary, especially this time in the ministry. I've known Bishop Basil for many, many years and Ma Anne. They've contributed a lot in our ministry, especially in our growth. We've been with them in tough times and difficult times in the ministry. They pulled us in their shoulders. He carried a very strong apostolic ministry over his life, especially with a great favor of faith. I've seen this church that they've been leading and the family growing from a classroom to the building and also to the ends of the earth in which they are preaching the ministry of the word of God. We would like to say we wish you, Dad and my end, many, many years of impact in the ministry, impacting their lives, raising men and women of faith who are full of faith. I would like to say that even as I'm working in the ministry, some years ago in 1992, Bishop Basil Tryon, he prophesied a powerful word over my life at Kaira Camp that ushered me into the ministry, which is so prophetic and so profound. And the result and the fruit of that word is, a, is, is, is visible today to each and every person who knows us. We have planted so many churches across South Africa, not just in South Africa, but also across the world. It has been so impacting. May the Lord bless you so much. We would like to and to you to enjoy many, many more years. We would like you to be there. And we want to want to celebrate one day 50 years of this ministry. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Congratulations, Mom and Dad Tryon. Yes. Uh, my Anne, uh, Bishop, Dad, we, we just wanted to say thank thank God for you. We love you so much. And again, congratulations for uh, 34 years of pastoring New Covenant Fellowship. God bless you. Yes, indeed. Yes. Oh, sir, ma'am, apostle, bishop, doctor. Uh, doctors, praise the Lord. We are so honored and blessed to be able to send these salutations and congratulations to you, Kingdom. Greetings Amen. for 34 years of service in yes. the local church through New Covenant Fellowship, 30 year, 34 years where you've raised thousands of people yes. in the Kingdom of God. You have raised hundreds, if not thousands, of sons and daughters yes. like us yes. over the years. You wow. have uh, uh, touched so many lives, yes. uh, including our own, praise the Lord. Yes. And we thank, thank so God much. for 34 yes. years of commitment, 
faithfulness, consistency, integrity, character, mm. love, servanthood. You have modeled and you continue to model for us such a high example and standard of excellence and integrity. Amen. We love you so dearly yes. and we honor you this day and you have expanded Amen. beyond um, the New Covenant Fellowship to the nations of the earth through the Basil Tryon Ministries and you've multiplied yourself yes. and raised a legacy yes. that is now touching the world through yes. your spiritual uh, descendants as it were, spiritual sons and daughters. We are proud to be part of that yes. and mom and dad, we just want to say congratulations. congratulations. You're an inspiration to all of us. May yes. God take you from strength to strength, renew your youth as the eagle Amen. and continue to use you for his glory. Glory in Jesus' name. Yes. Amen. Amen. Greetings in Jesus' name. This is Bishop Robert Casero from the Kingdom of Eswatini. I and my wife, the Princess Lindiwe, would like to congratulate Doctors Basil and Anne Prime together with New Covenant Fellowship on your 34th church anniversary. God has raised you as an eminent voice of our generation. Your ministry has always been on a cutting edge and a great blessing to the body of Christ. Thank you for allowing God to use you as apostolic leaders in carrying out the redemptive word of faith. I remember the day you came to our church in Eswatini. Dr. Basil, your ministry was outstanding. You released a word of faith to our congregation that brought a major shift in the atmosphere and the life of our church has never been the same even up to now. God's grace is so awesome over your life. We treasure you. We love you. We appreciate you. Even as we're going to get on the online Jubilee conference, we wish you well and we pray that God's blessings may abound much more upon life. We love you together with uh, Dr. N, you are a great blessing to us and we wish you well. God bless you immensely. Amen. Good evening, family and friends, and welcome to Jubilee 2020. It's Friday night, and we are looking forward to a glorious night in the presence of God. Can we dedicate the service to God in a word of prayer? Father, we thank you tonight that we could come together once again on this third night of our Jubilee 2020 34th anniversary celebration. And we thank you for what you've done these past two nights. Thank you for the word you've ministered to us through the speakers these past two nights. And we are expecting at what you're going to do and say to us tonight. And so our hearts are open and receptive and we are ready to receive from you this evening. We thank you for this now, and we dedicate this service to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Well, we're going to worship and praise our God tonight. Join with us together with your families as I hand you over to the NCF worship team. God bless you. <music>
Welcome to Jubilee 2020. It's day three of our conference, and we are so blessed and honored to have you with us. It's now my, my privilege to hand you over to our senior pastors uh, and conference hosts, Drs. Basil and Anne Trine. Can you put your hands together as we welcome them right now? A warm welcome. Good evening to every one of you. We are so thrilled to have you uh, celebrate our 34th anniversary 
Our theme for this year is Kingdom Glory Manifestation. 34 years seems to have come so quickly. And the number three and four is very beautiful. Three, the Trinity, and four, the global four corners of the earth. We believe in God, that God is going to bless us, anoint us with fresh oil, give us uh, revelation and we are so grateful for the marvelous speakers that we have and every one of you I'm trusting God that you will join us every night of the conference and so from our and I from the depths of our heart we love you and appreciate you and a warm welcome to Jubilee 2020 well, as Dad has welcomed everybody, I'd like to welcome everyone tonight to our 34th Jubilee Conference. It's unbelievable that time has gone so fast, but uh, we're so blessed to have everyone tuning in and, and being with us at this time. And I would just like to just say thank you to everybody who has stood with us during these 34 years. Mm. Um, and honestly, I was just thinking before doing the speech that people are spread all over. Some are in Canada. My children, I want to thank them who stood with us from the beginning. Some Canada, some Australia, some of them are in, in Britain, New Zealand, all over the world. So we really want to give you a, a shout London out. Center. Thank you. And my daughter in London, of course. But I just want to say thank you to everyone who stood with us and made these 34 years what they are today. Truly, God has been with us. So bless you all. Thank you for being with us. And I know that we're going to be absolutely blessed. God bless you all. Well, thank you to our senior pastors, Drs. Baz and Anne Trine. Thank you for welcoming us and just for dedicating the service tonight. We want to encourage you, family. We are streaming right now live on Facebook and on YouTube. And wherever you are connecting from, from across the globe, on behalf of our pastors, thank you so much for joining us and for being part of our 34th anniversary celebration. We would love to ask you, please, to engage with us during our service. And whether it's on the Facebook live chat or the YouTube live chat, could you please greet us and let us know who you are? Let us know where you're connecting with us from. We'd love to just interact with you um, through the service. We want to thank God that um, even though we're not able to meet physically together because of this current global pandemic, but we are honored and so privileged that we could, through the means of technology, connect with you and your families wherever you are across the globe. And we believe even so many more thousand people are being blessed through this conference and through the ministry um, during this conference. And so we want to encourage you, if you've missed any of our services, not a problem at all. You can go back online on Facebook and YouTube. The services are available on demand at any time at your convenience. You love to watch the services, go over the ministry. You can do that at your convenience, both on Facebook and on YouTube. We also would love to encourage you, if you would love to keep up to date with us, what we're involved with and what we are doing as a church, also just to see some of the highlights of our conference, please follow our pastor on social media. Um, the social media handle is on the screen right now, and you can follow him on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Each day also he posts something inspiring, something that will build your faith and be a blessing to you, and you can share it with those in your circle and just be a blessing to them as well. Well, tonight is Friday night, and we are so blessed and honored to have you with us. We're going to receive the offering right now, and um, if you would like to participate in the offering, sow a seed into our 34th anniversary conference. Our banking details are on the screen, and you can do an electronic transfer to our church banking details while the offering um, item has been uh, shared tonight. We are blessed tonight to have Pastor Christelle Trine will be receiving the offering. She's the daughter of our pastors, Drs. Basil and Trine. She has been part of the journey from the very beginning. She started the church together with uh, her parents. She's going to be a blessing to you and encourage you with a powerful offering exhortation tonight. And immediately after she shares, you're going to be blessed with an awesome ministry item by the NCF worship and praise team um, as they share a special song with you, which is also part of our 
34-year journey. And so God bless you as you give to God tonight. Kingdom greetings to our conference hosts, our conference speakers, and our conference online viewers. I'm so blessed to be a part of Jubilee 2020, where we are witnessing God's kingdom glory manifestation. I want to take this opportunity firstly to congratulate my spiritual and natural parents, Drs. Basil and Anne Tryon, on this glorious milestone of God's great faithfulness. It was 34 years ago where you heeded to the call of God and birthed New Covenant Fellowship. And we can truly say that we are thankful for your obedience. And we honor you and we salute you tonight for your sacrificial obedience for your love for God, His people, and the kingdom of God. And personally, I want to say thank you so much for demonstrating a living, lived out legacy of faith. So congratulations on this awesome milestone. Well, family, it's giving time. And so it is time to give unto the Lord. And what an awesome, uh, fertile ground that we have um, of the Jubilee Conference to sow our seeds into. You know, I thank God that God is not limited to our circumstances and situations to bless us. In fact, the Bible says to us in 2 Kings uh, 4, where there was a widow woman who was in great need. And in that time of need, the prophet Elisha says to her, what do you have to be able to sow? And um, I want to encourage you, no matter what the limitation may be, if you sow your seed, your seed will take you out of the need. There is a seed to meet every need that you are facing. And so let us give in faith, knowing that God is a God who is able to do what he has promised to do. The Bible says in Malachi 3.10 that we must prove the Lord, prove the Lord in our giving, prove the Lord in our tithing because he has promised us that our giving and our tithing is a protection. He has promised us that as we give in faith and obedience, he will bless us, he will increase us, and he will protect us. Giving is our covenant connection to the promises of God. Our seeds may leave our hands, but it will never leave our lives. And I thank God that we can give even when there is a global pandemic. We can give in no matter what situation or season that we are in. We find that in Genesis 26, 12, the Bible says to us that Isaac sowed at a time of famine. And because of his obedience, because of giving in faith, the Lord was able to bless him and increase him a hundredfold harvest on his seed because he did not fix his eyes on the circumstances. He did not fix his eyes on the climate and he did not fix his eyes on uh, the conditions that were around him, but he fixed his eyes and his faith on the word of God. He was obedient because God gave him a promise and he sowed his seed and God blessed him even in that land. So God is not limited by our limitations and we are sowing into good ground tonight. And so as you are preparing your seed, we believe, we believe God for a hundredfold increase and in harvest. Malachi 3.10 says to us to prove the word of God in our lives by our giving. And when we give with understanding and when we give with faith and when we release words of life and words of faith and we water our seed, the Bible says to us that God will protect us from the devourer. God will increase us. He will pour us out blessings. And we've been seeing such glorious manifestations of God's goodness even in this time of the conference. And in closing, I want to share with you a personal testimony of God's goodness and how a seed that I sowed into a need, a great need that I had at a time where it really seemed impossible in the natural and God was able to bring me a harvest. It was in 2018 where I got a doctor's report that they found cancer cells in my body. I had to stand on the word of God. I had to fix my eyes on God. I sowed my greatest seed that I could into my spiritual parents and my family and my spiritual parents stood with me and we came into agreement with God's word irrespective of the doctor's report. Like the widow woman, I sowed a seed 
even in the time of a greatest need because the greater the need that seed becomes a seed bed for miracles signs and wonders and when I sowed my seed I stood on the Word of God I confessed I decreed I believed that God's Word will not return void and two months after that family I was able to get a medical doctor's report declaring me cancer free by the blood of Jesus, by the coming together of agreement, by sowing my seed in a time of need. Nothing is impossible with our God. And yes, this is the ground that you are sowing in for kingdom glory manifestation. Sow your seed no matter what your need is. And I believe what God did for me, he will be able to do for you. And he will be able to bless you and increase you. You see, family, when we give in faith, we put our expectation on the word of God because we know who is the Lord of the harvest. Our God is the Lord of the harvest. And during the time that I was going through um, my healing journey, my dad was ministering a series called You Coming Out with the Spoils. And I thank God that I sowed a seed into that word and into that revelation of God's word. I sowed a seed that, Lord, I've been in battle and I've come out. Now I'm coming out with the spoils. And I want to testify because we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. It was a couple of months after I shared my testimony on YouTube, my broker got in contact with me to let me know that I had signed a policy seven months before that. And that policy covered me from dreaded disease. I didn't even have it in my heart or thought that seven months later I would be facing this Goliath. But the steps of a righteous are ordered by the Lord. And I sowed a seed that I'm coming out of this battle with the spoils. And I'm here to testify and let you know, family, that out of that, I was able to receive a wealth transfer and receive a, a, a text. In fact, it was just a, I was driving into my um, garage and I, I got a text and there was a transfer internal transfer of 500,000 <laughs> yes that is half a million from that policy which covered me from dreaded disease almighty god and heavenly father we come before you tonight with an expectation in our hearts knowing that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we can ask or think according to your power that is at work within us we declare and we decree a harvest of kingdom glory manifestation in every seed that is sown tonight in jesus name amen and amen god bless family and let us give in faith
Welcome to the third night of Jubilee 2020 Kingdom Glory Manifestation. We are so thrilled to have every one of you online celebrating 34 years of New Covenant Fellowship. We are also so privileged and honored to have Dr. Bill Winston with us tonight to minister God's Word. We have known Dr. Bill Winston over 21 years at New Covenant Fellowship and enjoyed his ministry. He has ministered the Word of Faith to our church and we have studied his ministry and the Word and the revelation he carries and we recognize Dr. Bill Winston as an apostle of faith to the nations of the world. You are going to be so blessed with the word of God and the grace of God, the grace of faith will be imparted to you tonight in Jesus' name. I want to thank every one of you for your seeds that you have sown 
to Jubilee 2020. All your offerings, God richly, richly bless you. In Psalm 110, and I believe that that is for us today, where the Lord said unto my Lord, Jehovah said unto Jesus, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that all your enemies are under your feet right now in Jesus' name. God richly bless you and the anointing is flowing freely on the meeting in Jesus' name. Well, family, I'm so excited and I've been waiting for this moment the whole evening. It's my privilege to hand you over in a moment to our guest speaker for tonight, Dr. Bill Winston. Now, Dr. Bill Winston is no stranger to our church and I'm sure he's no stranger to you. He's the senior pastor and founder of Living Word Christian Center in Chicago, Illinois, he's also the founder and president of Bill Winston Ministries, the Joseph Business School, and the Faith Ministry Alliance, which oversees 800 churches and ministries across the globe. Dr. Bill Winston is a general of faith in the body of Christ, and we have been so honored and privileged over the years to host him a number of times at our conference and at our Jubilee conference. And we were a bit disappointed we weren't able to host him in person but we thank God that he's still able to be with us for Jubilee 2020 online. So family, can you help me welcome as I hand you right now over to Dr. Bill Winston, our speaker for tonight. Hello, Dr. Bill Winston here. Oh, I'm glad to be here. This is Jubilee 2020 online. Praise God. Oh, I just want to say a real good shout out to Dr. Bishop Basil Tryon, his wife, Ann, I'm telling you, you've been such a blessing to so many people. Watch this, all over the world. I want to congratulate you on the 34th church anniversary. Glory to God of New Covenant Fellowship. So we're rejoicing with you. And just, I'm, I feel the privilege to be able to come in and just add a word to all these powerful speakers that you're having. You, you have the ability to draw powerful people, I'm telling you. Uh, just, you know, you, like draws like, you know what I mean? So I'm just saying thank you and all the anointed speakers, a shout out to them. And I know they're blessed, uh, all the people. So let's get started. I'll open with prayer. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much for the word of God. Thank you for the anointing that's on me and these lips of clay that I speak this word with excellence, accuracy, and boldness, asking you to think through my mind, speak to my lips, and this word will come forth unhindered, unchecked by any outside force. Father, we pray signs, wonders, and miracles will accompany the word preached. Now, we give you praise. We call it all done in Jesus' name. Can you say amen? Praise God. Okay, let's open our Bibles. Let's go over to Isaiah chapter 51, Isaiah chapter 51. Now this, uh, this scripture is, is very powerful in that it is prophetic. And um, I believe some things are happening and I'm going to try to bring some things out here in the time that we have to really share with you how we are right in the midst of a prophetic time. I mean, it's it's no coincidence that some things are happening that are happening here. I know the enemy's trying to make his move to establish one world government, but it won't work. <laughs> you know, God, the, G, the kingdom rules over everything. So, um, but, but there is uh, there's a move afoot here um, for a prophetic church to be rising now. And that's, that's what you're, you're seeing. You're seeing, uh, going to be seeing more and more evidence of that. Uh, let's start reading here at Isaiah chapter 51, starting at verse 1. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock of which you are hewed, and the hole of the pit which you are digged. Look unto Abraham your father, and unto Sarah that bare you, for I called him alone, and blessed him, and increased him. For the Lord shall comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places, and he will make her wilderness like Eden and her desert like the garden of the Lord. 
Joy and gladness shall be found therein, thanksgiving and the voice of melody. Now I want to go from there down to verse 16. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Now that's going to be the opening. I was told that the topic that I'm to preach from or teach or demonstrate, praise God, is uh, kingdom glory manifestation. Kingdom glory manifestation. Now what is the glory? The glory is, is, the, is the full essence of something. The, the glory of a seed is the tree. You know what I mean? It's a full essence of something. And in these last days, there's going to be a full essence of God through the body of Christ. I mean, this is going to be the glory. And we're going to see it, and I believe, start manifesting this year. Now, let's start here. If we look at this place where he says in verse 16, that I have put my words in thy mouth, and I've covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and say unto the earth uh, and, and say on, uh, and lay the foundations of the earth and say unto Zion, thou art my people. Now, this idea of foundation came in at the beginning when God created everything. Let there be, let there be, let there be, let there be. And in this, then he created man, who he gave mankind. He gave him authority over all the things that he had made, all the works of God's hand. That's what it says in Psalm chapter 8. So now mankind has authority over all of this. And here's Adam and Eve. Now, they were uh, made in the image of God, made in the image of God. If we look in the New Testament, over in the book of Ephesians, in Ephesians uh, chapter 5, he said, Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Now, this is Paul, by revelation, teaching on being imitators of God. That word followers there in the Greek is a word we get our word mimic from. So it's being imitators of God. Copy him, it says in the Amplified, if you put that up, copy him, you know, and, and, and imitate God. In other words, act just like God as his offspring, as his children, we're to act just like him. So you can believe that Adam acted just like God. In chapter two of Genesis, Adam named the animals. He began to give names. Whatever Adam called everyone, that was the name thereof. Well, how did Adam know the names? He didn't go to school there, so forth and so on. He downloaded. It's called what we call grace knowledge. It's called revelation. And this is knowledge that didn't come by way of intellectual learning. You see, learning is something that is basically um, time-driven. It's something that's linear. Today, we've got digital. And we've gone from those old eight track tapes and all of that. And we've gone from that. Now we're in CDs. Now we're just downloading. And that's what Adam did. He downloaded from God. Now notice what we're saying here. We're saying the glory is, is that we're going back to the garden. Everything that Adam expressed, the expressions of Adam, we're going to be seeing through the church. Now what Jesus did is he came to be the sample son. Paul calls him by revelation, the last Adam. He came to show us how Adam operated. And that way that Adam operated, Jesus said, the works that I do, you can do also. And even greater works than these shall you do, because I'm going to the Father. Now, how did God do things? Well, he said in Genesis chapter 1, that when God spoke, the Holy Ghost was out there waiting on things to, to, to be spoken. He was waiting on the Word. So God the Father originates, God the Son is the Word, and God the Holy Spirit is the one that manifests the Word. Now, this same, same thing is going to happen with us at the church 
as we're released into this world to act like God. See, the same thing. We're to, to say things. And, and so what I want to bring out first is that this whole idea of image, that, that um, this image has to be there for us to be able to act like God. We have to have his image uh, in us. And this image can be gotten by us taking this word and meditating this word. And whatever's on this word will build itself inside of us and inside of our consciousness. So we'll start acting like God. And so what I want to say here is um, there are places that we can't go, things that we can't do, and et cetera, et cetera, without the word going forth first. And that's here again, we're coming full circle now. We're coming back to the garden that the way things were gotten done were, or were caused to be done is true, the word of God. So the word was made flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word has to be in us first. And once that word is in us and we boldly declare that word, the Holy Spirit is right there to manifest that word. See, he's not authorized to oper- operate on any word that's not operational inside of you. Now, here's what we got to learn to do. We got to learn the power of words because 99% of the things that Jesus did, he did with words. <clears throat> now, so uh, I put some things down here that, um, let's see um, what I put down here first that uh, there are things you can't do, places you can't go, uh, uh, property you can't possess, so forth and so on, um, without, except you do it through words. Except you do it through words. See, we're now, the Bible talks about perilous times. Let's go over to that. Uh, this is found now in um, 2 Timothy and chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, this is, this is a wonderful time to be, to be saved. I mean, this is it. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, if, if I wasn't saved, I'd get saved because this is it. Look what he says here in 2 um, Timothy chapter 2. and uh, Pardon me, chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Um, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. The perilous times shall come. I looked up perilous, and you could look it up. Do a word study. It, it's times hard to deal with. You know, some people find that this plague, um, you know, that's out there, hard to deal with. That is, and, 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 and there are people, you know, even pastors have found hard to deal with. Well, well he said this here. Well, remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross, and this is found over here in Hebrews and Hebrews chapter 12. And look what it says here. This is Jesus hanging on the cross now. And he says this. <clears throat> I'll get to it. Praise God. He says in verse 2, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finish of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross and despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the Father of the throne of God. Now, here is Jesus on the cross for the joy that was set before him. How did he get joy out of that? Because he had another reality built inside of him. He could see another reality. You see, you cannot boldly say what you have not clearly seen. Say it again. You cannot boldly say what you have not clearly seen. Look, look what Jesus said. Now this is, again, we're going to the last days and in these last days, then we're going to have to go back to acting like Adam. We're going to have to act like our father because if we are going to rise and be those that, you know, God has in these last days to be able to lead the world, then we're going to have to act like God. Act like God. And look what he says in verse 14 of Mark's gospel in chapter 10 and verse 14. Here's what he says. And 
They shall mock him and shall scourge him and shall spit upon him and shall kill him. And the third day he shall rise again. Isn't that interesting? So the Holy Ghost can create a reality inside of us that is greater than anything outside of us. So we'll have no problem speaking what we see. And that's the, the reason for meditation. I wrote a little book called um, Meditation, The Missing Link. Because a lot of people in the church hear the word, but what they don't do is take time and to confess that word or meditate that word and build that word inside of them so that there be another reality inside of them. Now, as this happens and this another reality is formed, look what he says here in Matthew's gospel and chapter 12. And look at Matthew chapter 12 and starting at verse 35. He says, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things brings forth good things. All right. Notice, brings forth. All right. Let's, let's go back because this is part of planting the heavens. All right. All right. Let's, let's just look at it now. Just imagine a warehouse full of everything that you'll ever need in this earth. Full. Not only for you, but for people you will minister to. You see, God is making you a walking supply house. That's what he's making you. And you have things that are already in heaven that can only be accessed by God's people. They can only be accessed by faith. And so you build the faith from the word of God to access things that are in the warehouse that you need to plant the heavens because he's going back to the garden where Jesus taught it. He said, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Come on, on earth as it is in heaven. Why? Because earth was supposed to be a copy of heaven. Adam was supposed to get it that way. See, God, he said his word won't return void. That's found in Isaiah 55 and verse 11 but it shall accomplish that which he pleases. See, it, 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 we're not going out of here with the job half done. We're the ones that are going to finish the work. We're the pathetic church. We're going to finish the work that he's called to do. But I'm going, saying to you, to finish that work, you've got to have the image that God has of you and he uh, made for you to have so that you could do the things that God has planned for you to do. See, he plans for you. Jesus was a sample son. He said, the things that I did to you, you do too. 99% of the things Jesus did, he did with words. And now you're coming in. Now you're going to have to learn how to speak words. Job chapter 22, verse 28. Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established. See, there are places you can't go, promises you can't get, property you can't own, the land you can't possess without speaking it first. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Isn't that powerful? Notice Daniel. Here's Daniel, the three Hebrews. So this is found in Daniel chapter 3. And here's the three Hebrews. And what happened? The, 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 the king said, hey, when you hear the music, you bow down and worship this golden image. And they said, no, 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 that's crossing the line. I'm not doing that. All right? Now, what happened? He said, well, boys, now, you boys been pretty good so far. But now, now you, you're trying to make me look bad. So, so you better bow down or I'm going to throw you into a furnace of fire. Notice what they said, King, we really respect you and so forth and so on. But the God that we serve, he will deliver. See how he had to say it? Now, understand what I said about saying it. You cannot boldly say what you have not clearly seen. You see, you, you've got to take time and build inside of you this whole image is of you indestructible. I, I don't care what's in the air. 
<laughs> you got to build the image inside of you. And when you say things based on a believing heart, then the virtue is released to cause a, 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 a performance of what was promised. The woman with the issue of blood. If you look in the Amplified in Mark chapter 5, for she said, and the Bible says she continued to say, if I can just touch his clothes, I shall be whole. Well, notice, the moment she touched, virtue flowed. Why? Because she believed what she said, and it caused a performance of what was promised. And that's the same thing, <laughs> that's the same thing with you, that if you believe what you say, it'll cause a performance of what can be promised. So Mary is another example in Luke chapter 4, uh, pardon me, Luke chapter 1. That's the same thing that happened. Look, look what it says. Let's, let's go back there real quick now. We're, we're coming up on Mark eleven twenty three 23 and 24. And you're going to see why a man named Dr. Kenneth e. Hagin stayed on that for 50 years. <laughs> because he knew that's where we were going. She was going to whosoever shall say to this mountain. Because there are places you can't. That enemy has set up such a blockade. And it takes uh, the wisdom of God and the might of God to be able to penetrate it. No human can outsmart and out uh, defeat or defeat the devil. No human. No human. That's why God knows that he had to raise up a church because the church are the only, is the only institution that, that can actually stop the movement of, of, of Satan. The only one that can penetrate the gates of hell. The only ones. Um, over in Luke and Luke's gospel uh, well, I, I tell you what, I, w- I won't turn there because of time. But you can go to it in Luke chapter 1, and you'll see that when Mary came down, um, she had been told by the angel that she's going to have a child. Now, not just, just have a child, but she's going to have um, a son of God. I mean, now, she's got to believe this. She said, well, be it unto me. Now, what does she do? Conceive seed. See, just conceive it, see, and, and you sleep and rise night and day, Mark chapter 4, and the seed will grow up, you know not how. No, this is interesting because Jesus talked about something, and I want you to see in Matthew chapter 15, which is a very important um, truth. He said in Matthew chapter 15, starting here at verse 13, but he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted shall be rooted up. Now, what what does this mean here? He is saying that inside of all of us, we came into the kingdom with ungodly thought patterns. Now, we got to fix this mind because you're going to perform according to the renewing of your mind. Be not conformed to this world, but be a transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind is the one that has something in it called the will. And it's the most potent force in the universe. Imagine, well, God is the most, no, he won't violate your will. <laughs> you know what I mean? So the will, so you've got that in here. So you've got to be convinced in your heart and believe in your heart that these things that God says are true. And so in this, He said, every tree in you that the heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted up because these trees are the things that manifest the fruit and the fruit are the outward adorning, the outward manifestation, the whatever is is growing up on the tree is seen in the fruit. It could be in your actions. It could be in your speech. It could be so forth. So when you can't correct that speech or you can't stop doing a certain thing, stop working on the outside. Go into the inside, start working on that inside and change that inside because the tree is going to be known by its fruit. You see, whatever's going to is on the inside is going to be up. Folks, let me tell you. (sighs) Poverty, for example. Why is poverty? Um... The the, poverty is not just caused by somebody that doesn't make enough at the job or don't have a job, whatever, or the country they're in. 
Poverty, the real reason for it is the absence of self-production. You see, you, you and I are producers. We're, they're, 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 that's, what we, that's what we do. That's what we are. All right, let, let, let's, let's, let me, I don't want to get ahead of you, but, but here, here's, okay, let me simplify. First, there are three things every believer must know to finish the mandate of God or to manifest kingdom glory. One, who you are. Who you are. Who you are. You're, you're not, well, I'm this, I'm, I'm black, I'm Indian, I'm so forth. No, 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 no. no. There, there's an expression that's higher than that. Because if you're just only African American and we throw you in the fire, you're going to burn up. <laughs> See, <laughs> sometimes if you're just a member, <laughs> you know, but he, he, there's something higher than just membership in that citizenship. That's who you are in the kingdom. The kingdom has sent you as an ambassador to be untouchable. <laughs> you know what I mean? To be unstopped. The kingdom sent you for that. You could be, like I said, you could be of any background, but what's going to do it for you is your consciousness of your citizenship and the fact that you are a child of Almighty God. So you have to know who you are. Next, you've got to know what you have, what you have. And the, the thing about Eve is Satan talked her into believing that she didn't have what God said. And so she's here picking fruit, trying to get something that she already has. And so, and then um, uh, who you are, what you have, and what you can do. And that the, uh, the anointing of God comes inside of us and makes it so that we can actually do all things through that anointing that strengthens us. So, I'm saying to you now that there's a place that God wants you to go, but the first thing you got to do is know who you are in him. And Adam lost that when he fell and did he and Eve sin, they lost that fellowship. They lost that knowing of who they were. But one of the biggest things they lost, they lost the, the ability for God to provide for them. And he, it's, it's things that God has to do for us, for us to be on top. All right, let me try to kind of close this out. I see about four minutes here, uh, a little over four minutes. Now, let's look at this because <clears throat> God made you to be a creator, to be a creator. He made you just like he saw darkness and called it light and light was. God made you to operate on that level, on that level. The shopping mall that we're in right now was not like that when we got it. It was an eyesore. I mean, it was in bad shape. But look at it now. You know, he made you to bring things forth. Fruitful means to create. Fruitful means to produce. Fruitful means to, um, to, to uh, manifest. Fruitful. There's Yet, how do we get fruitful? The Bible says in Luke chapter 8, verse 11, the seed is the word of God. So somebody came from Africa and said, Dr. Winston, your airplane is in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. Well, I went to looking for it because I needed an airplane because of the overseas flights and all that. I said, Lord, wait a minute, I need an airplane. Well, the airplane was in the storehouse. When was it put there? From the foundation of the world. God knew that day was coming and he already had an airplane there. Now, I got to get it. So he told me how to get it. He said, your airplane is in Ecclesiastes chapter 10. So I went to Ecclesiastes chapter 10 because it's already in the warehouse. Now I got the word and I found in verse 20, a bird of the air shall carry your voice. Whoa, what did I do? Meditated. Why? Now I'm getting it big on the inside because before I can birth it on the outside, it's got to be inside first. So I began to get it on the inside. Oh, next thing you know, people start bringing me things and saying, Pastor, um, God told me to give you this. I said, well, what is it? It was in a big bag. I said, she said, well, it's something God told me to give you. I said, well, what is it? She said, well, God, this is, this is yours. I said, well, lady, you got to open it up. I got to see what's in it. She opened the bag up. It was an aircraft piston. 
I said, wait a minute, a part of an engine? I said, Lord, you're going to give me this thing in parts? He said, no, this is the blade. See, it says in Mark 4, first you get the blade, then the ear, and then the full coin. See, the manifestation has to come forth inside before outside. Now, what am I talking about? Kingdom, glory, manifestation. Everything he's got in there, he wants here. Everything he put in the warehouse, he wants it here. Folks, I mean, when I say that, I mean everything he's ordained you to do, because you can't get everything in the warehouse here. It'll have to be stacked on top of each other. There is so much God has for this earth until you can't even put it in there at the same time. Now, let's deal with some words here. Be fruitful. This is Genesis chapter 1 and verse 28. Multiply. What am I talking about here? Increase what you're being fruitful in. Increase. You had a first broadcast right there in, uh, in, in South Africa. And then the next broadcast spread to all Africa. And then the next broadcast spread to the United States. I'm just saying increase. Replenish the earth. Make it cover the whole earth. Make it cover the whole earth. And perpetually renew and resupply it. So it was made for us that if a kidney goes bad, it was made for us in Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken, reproduce, repair, replenish your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. That's one of the things the devil fights is bodily resurrection. She, Jesus said, you know how that body was so beaten? It says so in uh, Isaiah chapter 52. It said you couldn't even tell he was hardly a man up there on that cross. But look, when they picked it, when he came and served uh, the penalty for you and I in hell and came back, God raised him from the dead. He said, again, I have begotten you. Jesus came back through that tomb, slipped on that body. You know what I mean? And then they saw him and thought he was a gardener. What happened to all the scars? They disappeared. What happened to all the leprosy in the man that the prophet told him, go dip seven times in the River Jordan? The seventh time he came up, he was clean. I'm saying if God will do it for them, if he'll do it for Jesus, he'll do it for you. I don't know what you need, but I know this. You can plant the heavens. See, whatever God has already put in the warehouse, you can extract it. You can bring it down in your life. But not only that, Let's go over here to Mark's Gospel, um, chapter 8. Mark's Gospel, chapter 8. Now, this is kind of an interesting time because over in Psalm chapter 92 in verse uh, 12, God calls us palm trees. Now, just do a little study on a palm tree and look at all the things that a palm tree produces. We have cooking oils. We have all kinds of medicine, all kinds of things from a palm tree. And then he says in Psalm 92 and verse 14, he said, even you'll bear fruit in old age. Notice, you'll still be bringing forth creation. See, it was meant that whatever the problems the world has, they're above the world. They can't solve them. And God giving you wisdom. He says in Proverbs 2, I've laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. You're the righteous. So you're going to know something that people don't know who are not in Christ. And that's going to help us be the influence. And, and people want to join the church or people want to follow you. Let your light so shine. Now, look what he says here. He says in uh, Mark chapter 8 and look at verse, I'll look at verse 24. And he looked up and he said, see, I see men as trees walking. Now, a lot of people read that because this is about Jesus healing a blind man. He cried out for healing. The man wanted healing. So what happened? He took the man out of town. I think he took him out of town because it was so much unbelief. Jesus took him out of town. Now, notice what Jesus said. What I did, you're going to be able to do. Why? Because all of that supply in heaven is to be used on the earth, not only for you, needs that you might have, airplane, whatever, houses, whatever. But other people, see, you don't need to hoard anything. There's too much. And you're to believe it and bless other people, not only to be blessed, but to bless others as well. So here's this man. <coughs> Excuse me. Here's this man. And notice what he says here in, in, uh, 
in uh, Mark chapter 8 and verse 24. And he looked up and he said, I see men as trees walking. Oh my goodness. Now what does he mean by that? You are going to be a walking supply house. Glory to God. If you look over here in Matthew chapter 15, Jesus healed the lame. Jesus healed the blind. Watch this. Jesus healed the maimed. New arms, new legs. Boy, when people see that, that's the glory. <laughs> that's the full essence of God through the church. Manifesting things that could never be done far above the world. Oh, I know we can get some organs of somebody who died. And so much. We're not talking about that. <laughs> We're talking about something much higher than that. See, God said to one man, he said, now, if I took an eye off of this man and put it on this man, he said, I'd be stealing. That's what he said. Told him, no, no, no. Manifestation. Glory to God. Calling things that be not as though they were. Now, this is, this is you now. Because in the last days, perilous times are going to come. In other words, we, we've gone as far as we can go with the old way of doing things. Now we're going to have to go on up higher. We're going to plant the heavens. God said, you give the fruit of your lips. He'll give you what to say. And he gave me what to say with that airplane and look at it manifested. He gave me what to say with this shopping mall. Uh, he said, every place the sole of your foot shall come, shall tread. That have I given to you. Look at it. He gave me what to say to get a Joseph Business School and one school first and then increase that school and then replenish the earth. Watch this. And subdue other systems. Glory to God. So God is just not calling you as a kingdom citizen to go into a place and fix a broken system. He's calling you to replace it. You can't fix Babylon. You have to replace it with the kingdom. The kingdom is in you waiting to be called forth wherever you go. Peace, be still. You remember when they were going from where Capernaum, I guess, going to the other side, and while they were there, Jesus went to sleep, and here comes a storm. I mean, that storm came up, and it was going to sink that boat. But what did Jesus do to stop the storm? Spoke to it. Nothing else can stop a storm except spiritual power that's released through words. How about Lazarus? Not these four days in stinking. Lazarus, come forth. My goodness, boy, I'm telling you. Look at that. I'm just saying it's time for you to start saying and seeing. It's time for you to start operating and acting just like your father. The last days, we're coming up on things, pandemics and so forth, that nothing can stop it but words. And we have the privilege to speak them. You are made in his image and in his likeness. Now, I'm saying to you, this book, we're going to have to come back to it. <clears throat> because a lot of things the church is trying to do without the book. This is it. This is where we start and stop. Right here. See, an ambassador can't say anything but what his country says. The Bible says you are citizens of the kingdom. And so as you come in this earth, God has already given you what to say. It's in this book right here. And if it's not in here, you got no business saying it. Calling things. Whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things that he says shall come to pass, he'll have whatsoever he saith. Come on, get some courage. Start speaking it. Then he said this, Whatsoever things you desire, Mark eleven twenty four. when you pray, believe you've received them and you shall have them. Why? Because God does not want to come back down to this circumstance-driven natural man. 
He wants you to come up and get it through a spiritual process of the kingdom of God. Believe you receive when you pray and you shall have it. Isn't that powerful? Well, these are just a couple of things. Now, I'm saying this because we're in prophetic time. Start speaking something. You better start saying something. Believe it and speak it. And nothing can stop it, no matter who you are, no matter where you came from, and so forth. Don't think somebody's smarter than you. Mark, Mark chapter, Matthew chapter 13, he said, to you it's given to know the things of the kingdom of God. God's going to give you intelligence that it outruns anything in the world. The smartest PhD is not going to be able to get what you got. Why? You're going to download it. You're going to download it. And when you do, it's going to be higher than anything and far outperform anything of the world. Well, I trust that you've gotten something out of that. I was kind of going all over the place because I only have a limited time, but I wanted to bless you with that. Why? He wants you to replenish this earth. Look what it says. I, I, I just want to read that same scripture again. I'm not going to take time, but just in Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 16. It, it's, such, it's, it's such a thrilling scripture. See, God, God's, he's going to have you to be the problem solvers. People are going to follow you. You're, you're the problem solver. You've got an answer to everything that's ever coming out here because the wisdom of God was here before the problem ever came. Look what he said in verse 16. And I have put my words in your mouth and I have co- covered you in the shadow of my hand that I may plant the heavens and say and lay the foundations of the earth and say to Zion, you are my people. Amen. My name is Bill Winston, and I approve this message. God bless you. Now, let me just say a prayer. Father, I pray for all those who are listening. I pray the anointing be upon them for knowledge and wisdom that is far above this world. The wisdom, almighty God. I pray that you give them skill in everything that they do, that they will outperform any of of that which is natural and that people will see that God is with them. Father, let the glory of God rest upon the church. And I pray this right now in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Keep walking by faith. Wow, 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 wow. What a word of faith, family. What a prophetic word for kingdom glory manifestation for us by Dr. Winston. And so thank you so much, Dr. Bill Winston, on behalf of our pastors, Drs. Basil and Antrine. Thank you for that powerful prophetic word that you've ministered to our church, you've ministered to our city, to our nation, and to all who have connected with us online tonight across the globe. Can we just close the service in a word of prayer as we give thanks to God for the word tonight. Father, we thank you for that word that we've received from Dr. Bill Winston that has stirred up our faith, that has imparted faith and revelation to us, and that is propelling us into all that you have for us to demonstrate your glory and manifest your glory in and through our lives. We thank you, O God, that despite what is taking place in the world, despite this pandemic and this season, Despite what the enemy is meant for evil, you are turning it around. And despite you are working in the season and through the season for your glory to be manifest in us and through us, for your kingdom to be advanced and enlarged through us and by us in the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you that no pandemic is going to hold us back. No demonic force is going to hold us back. No circumstance or government regulation is going to hold us back. But we are going to be all you've called us to be. We are going to do all that you've called us to do. And we are going to manifest your glory on this earth in the name of Jesus. So thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you for this word. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, God bless you, family. Good night. Thank you for connecting with us tonight. We meet tomorrow again. Now, remember, tomorrow we meet at 10 a.m. tomorrow morning and 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. We've got two sessions tomorrow. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Good night and God bless you.
Wow, what an amazing word from the man of God all the way from the United States of America, Dr. Bill Winston. Thank you so much for sharing such a powerful word with us. On behalf of our conference hosts, Drs. Basil and Anne Trine, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Feel free to share this meeting everywhere. Maybe you have some friends or you have some family members that weren't able to be with us here tonight. They can always catch up on this link from me, Manda Mapumolo. God bless you and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.